economy, slowing economic growth um, and really um, challenging a lot of economies. But at the same time, what we really need to look at is actually the trade weighted sterling, you know, where we look at our trading partners, the amount that we spend with the US, the amount we spend with Europe. And that's come down very rapidly in, since the start of the year, down all, almost over 9%. In the last month, it's absolutely cratered, only been worse on a monthly basis over the last 15 years a couple of times. Um, and you know that is within a whisker of its absolute all-time low. And that trade-weighted index is the thing that the Bank of England will be worried about. Because you know, whilst we can't do anything about the dollar, what we have to respond to is those imported prices and that dollar decline because so much of the UK's um, you know, imports will be priced in dollars. You know, that's what the Bank of England is responding to. And in a world where you know, we were already suffering from very tight labour markets because of labour shortages that we haven't seen since the 1970s, just injecting fiscal, um, you know, very unfunded and very untargeted fiscal injections is what, you know, almost unprecedented. The IMF coming out and talking about this, Bostic talking about this. You know, the UK is in a, you know, the UK government has put the UK uh, economy into a difficult situation and made the Bank of England's position almost impossible. So sort of lots of threads to pick up on, but, but let's just talk about the trade one for a moment here. Um, in the trade presses, there was a certain amount of comment about this weakness of sterling, suggesting that actually some exporters in the UK, some manufacturers, are getting quite interested in the idea of selling more abroad because the pound has weakened to this point. Or, economic orthodoxy would tell us that the currency is a useful tool in adjusting trade imbalances. Will it work this time round over the medium to longer term, Ian? Well, you know, certainly that weaker exchange rate is beneficial. Clearly, Japan has had an even bigger devaluation and they will probably get a, a larger share, partly because, you know, what do we export? Our main export is financial services. You know, and you know, it's not as though we're exporting um, uh, you know, too many on the manufactured side. Yes, we've got a nice auto industry and high-end tech um, uh, areas as well. So some of the FTSE, you know, which has got a very large international exposure, a large proportion of its earnings come in dollar terms, uh, on foreign currency terms, that will do relatively well. But the domestic um, uh, 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 companies the FTSE 250, you know, those are going to be the ones that struggle here, Jeff. And that's what we're concerned about for the UK and the broader UK market, not just the very largest stocks. And, you know, they're still still relatively expensive on a trailing basis for the whole economy, whole market, about 14 and a half. And we got down to, to sub 12, actually sub 10 on a number of occasions for the UK equity market. So, yes, you'll get some boost. But, you know, it takes time to re-engineer the economy and it will take time for those um, exporters to be able to um, you know, increase their, their market share, I'm afraid. Uh, morning, in anticlimax of the year. I don't disagree with you about the trade weight, so I'm afraid to say we're, we're, we're in accord. But, but you lovely man, look, in terms of what our viewers do trade, it is individual pairs or they trade the dollar index uh, against an individual currency as well. And it is unambiguous when you and I can agree about trade weighted and about you know, deficit spending and where that leaves this country uh, in terms of the pecking order. But the fact of the matter is our viewers are trading pairs as well. And the question I have for you is, is the pound pairs, are the pound pairs against the dollar, the euro, going to significantly worsen from here, given the huge amount of deficit spending that a lot of our peers are trading with and, and, and dabbling with as well? Yes, you know, I think that we would feel that the possibility of parity is significantly there. If you look at some of the technical uh, supports, you know, they're down in the, the 90s, Steve. So, um, you know, when you look at the unwillingness, you know, so the Bank of England has option opted for a technocratic response at the current time, saying they will wait for the OBR uh, review, um, you know, effectively uh, waiting till November to make a move. You know, I think the market will, you know, be very impatient about that. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, even with um, Mr. Pill's uh, strong comments, you know, that the, uh, the market just keeps on driving sterling down. It's always the case. We know in the past, um, you know, or you, or you're a very experienced commentator. You've been doing this a long time. When the markets see a crack, 
they go for it in a big way. And we see that crack really, um, you know, being widened out for the UK. You know, there's not a lot to support it. The bank didn't raise rates 75 basis points when, you know, the ECB did and the Fed did and everybody else did. And even the Swedes raised 100 basis points to try and stay, say, stave off the weakness in their currency that you've highlighted. We did nothing. Um, and that is the fundamental problem here. Yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, look, in terms of equities as well, um, this is a very current note of yours as well. I think uh, maximum underweight equities. And uh, Ian, I'm fascinated because... There is a lot of yield support for a lot of these equities now. I was looking at the yield on the broader FTSE. It's over 4% now. On high yield FTSE, you're getting the best part of 7% as well. But not just UK. Let's, get, let's broaden this out as well. Is there anywhere you would be accumulating at the moment after these very large declines in global equities? Well, I think the, the place that I mentioned earlier, you know, that place that's had a big deva the biggest devaluation is is Japan. So that's the type of, you know, it is largely, uh, you know, set aside from, you know, much of the, um, you know, the, 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 the stress, you know, they're seeing it through their exchange rate, but they want to get inflation higher. And, you know, at some point they will ease that policy and then the yen will start rising again, you know, as the dollar comes down, perhaps later in the year, early next year. Um, and then you would actually see Japanese equities do very well from this perspective. You know, we still think that the U.S. market in a um, in, in a race to the bottom, the U.S. market still probably outperforms. So that would be the other place. But, you know, absolute terms, Steve, we still think you've got a lot of downside in absolute terms, even for the winners. Um, in this scenario, you know, equities um, aren't cheap relative to bonds when you compare them to their, you know, three, five year, 10 year averages. You know, we actually think this is a 10 year opportunity for buying bonds relative to equities. You may not win out in the short term, but, you know, on a one year view, you know, we feel very comfortable that, you know, this is actually still a world where it's better to be thinking about cash and be thinking about bonds rather than thinking about those equity markets.